The 15th ranked Miami Hurricanes lose 90 to 63 to Colorado, an unranked team, as the Hurricanes fall to 7 to 2 on the season. It's their second loss of the year and their second blowout loss. I think this one should sound a lot of alarms if you already weren't concerned before, because I think the way that Miami's playing this season, the way it looks against some of these top, these better competition, these better teams. I just don't see Miami right now as a top four team in the ACC. I think North Carolina and Duke are going to be there in the end, compete for a league title, as well as I really like how Virginia and Clemson are playing. I think both those teams are ahead of Miami at this point. And I think for Miami, that might be a bit of a surprise to a lot of fans who expected uh, another season competing for a league title and making another deep run in the NCAA tournament with so many key guys returning. And you're just hoping that they could build on with what they did last year. However, I think Miami's definitely much more in the conversation of making the NCAA tournament, trying to put together a resume for that, as opposed to really competing for a league title because Miami is just getting overmatched against these teams that are better than them or that have quality players as well. And I think that's the disappointing part because they're going to face teams similar to Colorado Maybe different, they're going to be different than Kentucky with what Kentucky can bring to the table. But I think Colorado definitely looks like some of the teams that Miami is going to see in the ACC in terms of their strengths and weaknesses. And I think today is certainly a concern for Miami moving forward. And without question, the things that stood out today in their loss, you know, was defense and rebounding. You know, the way the game was going, Miami was hanging in there in the first half, although they never had the lead, they never felt like they were in control. It felt like many times Colorado was going to get up by double digits there in the first half. But Miami battled back as they're giving up a bunch of paint points, a lot of easy buckets, not a lot of resistance, which stood out to me from a defensive effort standpoint. They just weren't providing enough resistance. I know they're undersized. Colorado's playing without Cody Williams, projected number one overall draft pick, a really talented 6'8 wing And without him, I I thought Miami should have been able to play much better. Although I did mention, you know, I did a scouting report on Colorado. I'd seen him three times this year. And I felt like even without Cody, that this was going to be a difficult challenge for Miami because I just thought with what Colorado could do from an offensive standpoint and defensively, I thought they were just going to be a very tough team for Miami to handle. And certainly that's what we saw today. You know, Miami didn't do very well. They had 19 turnover, 20 turnovers that led to 25 points. So not a very good, efficient performance offensively. Then just giving up a bunch of points in the paint, not providing enough turnovers, couldn't get out and run nearly enough the way they needed to, couldn't knock down three. It just offensively, defensively, giving up a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, second chance points as well as as Colorado was able to get a lot of rebounds. So it just overall was not a good performance. And I think the score indicated that, although Miami did only trail 37, 36 at halftime. Certainly looking back, it felt like fool's gold at the time. And that's how it proved to be, even though Miami took a 46, 43 lead a few minutes into the second half. And maybe you're thinking things could get going from there that Miami could stay out in front, but Colorado just had too many answers. They were just, you know, really excelling in too many areas that Miami just couldn't keep up with the turnovers 14 in the second half really added up. And And Colorado just ran away from it. And I think that's very disappointing for Miami not to be able to end these runs. And these runs are are becoming an issue for Miami. You know, I've talked about it before. Miami's been one of the best teams in the country. I've put together runs of at least 10 or more in a game. Actually entered this game second in the country in that category called Kill Shots by Evan Mia's website there. But they also were one of the teams that gave up the most in the country. And I think that's going to be an issue moving forward. They're going to have to figure out a way to really end runs and really stop teams from getting out to leads, you know, get, giving up these big runs. And that's what we saw in, the, in this game today. They just weren't able to essentially stop the bleeding, get back into the game, and really defensively get enough stops to let their offense get going. But overall, there are a lot of things with offensively that just weren't good enough, and that's why they had the poor showing today. And, and, you know, not getting enough stops certainly affects the offense, I believe. As Coach Larnega said after the game, there wasn't a video press conference, but I did post everything that he had to say on the website. I'll put the link below so you could see that for sure, uh, that in case you're in case you're interested in that. It was a short interview, but one thing he said, a couple things that stood out to me, 
was, you know, not just the turnovers, but in terms of Miami's size. And I do want to touch on that just a little bit here. So he knows this team is undersized. And he says, look, it's going to be that all year long. And I find that to be interesting because I think there are still some moves. Justin and I talked about this after that Kentucky loss, about some changes that need to be made, that should be made. I just don't think Miami's at that point. I'll, I'll be surprised if they do make a, a move to make their starting lineup a little bit bigger, even with the loss here. Because what's happening is their size, their their flaws, essentially their weaknesses, are, are not being hidden enough to allow their strengths to pull through. And they're getting exploited against teams like this. I, I like Colorado's team. I, I do think they have a good team. I said this coming into it. I'm not trying to diminish or, or you know say this is a good loss or anything like that. It's a blowout loss. You can't get blown out. And certainly moving forward, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for Miami because of the other teams that Miami is going to face in the ACC. I think if we just look at the next two games in the ACC to start it out as Clemson with what they're bringing to the table with P.J. Hall and how they're playing so well right now. And I think also with, with Wake Forest, the second game, I think those easily could be two straight losses out of the gate once January starts. And now Miami's one and two in, in ACC play. So I think there are things that can be corrected. I think they really need to seriously consider maybe a change of style of play to allow Matthew Cleveland to shift more to the three, Omir more to the four. If you're going to go with Casey or Nawako there at the five, they just got to get a little bit bigger, bigger because when they're playing small, it's just not effective enough. And, and this is what's happening is that they're just getting overran and overplayed. They, they just aren't doing nearly enough to be able to play small like they did in recent years where they're able to play small and, and could do enough, you know, where teams had to really play to Miami's strengths. And that's not what's happening right now where Miami basically they're on scouting reports. Teams are really finding out ways that they can really go at Miami. And I don't think this is just a two game thing with Kentucky and Colorado. I think teams in the ACC are going to be able to exploit Miami the way these two teams have and if Miami continues to rack up losses, you're really going to be in a battle to make the NCAA tournament this year. And with that, and after the loss, you know, Ken Palm does a projection of their conference schedule that I always pay attention to. And right now, they, they have Miami going 11 and 9, finishing 11 and 9 in the ACC. It was 12 and 8 before this game. So the way that this game and other games kind of played, that they've now adjusted that. So, I, I think that shows you with where Miami's at right now, and I do think that's an accurate reading. I, I don't think that's overreacting to a loss or, or really saying that this team can can bounce back or it's just a one- or two-game sample size. I feel like the things we've seen all season long have kind of led to this, and I think that that's where this team is right now. And individually, you know, there were a lot of individuals that needed to play much better today. You know, I thought the backcourt of Bensley Joseph and Nigel Pack got severely outplayed by what Colorado was doing with Simpson and also bringing Hammond to make his first start. I think I thought they didn't, I thought Miami's guards didn't, you know, sh shoot the ball well enough. They didn't score well enough. They also didn't create well enough or defend. And I thought that matchup, they really struggled. And as Colorado was able to get it going, I thought Wugo Poplar had his worst game of the season. And if you look at some analytic stuff that I posted on the website, that backs that up. I, the six turnovers were a career high in a game. That's coming off five assists, which was a season high. So disappointing. The six turnovers by Wuga just couldn't get it going offensively. I thought he needed to have a big game in this one, even if Cody played in the game. But with Williams out, I, I thought Wuga really needed to have a big game. And I know a lot of NBA scout draft scouts are, are there wanting to watch Wuga there in New York playing at the Barclays Center. And, and Wuga didn't show up uh, as, as well as he needed to for this team to stay out in front. Also, I look to Wuga as a guy that has to step up when things aren't going well for the team. If they're down by 10 or 12 or whatever it might be, he needs to have a few buckets to get them back in it. And I just think he just didn't do enough today. And I thought defensively he was guarding Da Silva. It was an interesting matchup. I think that shows you what this coaching staff thinks of Matthew Cleveland defensively. Ideally, Cleveland is on De Silva, but that's not the matchup they wanted to go with. And I think, once again, Matthew Cleveland has to be better. Zero defensive rebounds, two overall. They're just not doing a good job inside the paint. And I think, again, I've mentioned this with Bensley Joseph possibly being the odd man out. If they're not getting what they need from Cleveland or, or these other guys, they've got to figure out a way to kind of adjust things. And, and I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I just think that these can 
these issues could continue to pile up once again because I'm just looking at the other teams in the ACC, having a chance to watch them. I think there are more issues that could continue to arise as these teams, as, as they play these two teams that are coming up, as I mentioned, with Clemson and Wake Forest, other teams, Duke, North Carolina, those teams are going to provide some mismatch opportunities for themselves and put Miami on the back foot. So let me know what you think. Uh, maybe it's an overreaction. Maybe you're just looking at it, it's a one-game thing. Maybe you're not that worried. Maybe you feel like offensively this team is going to be fine and then they're going to be able to make shots at a high enough level to overcome these deficiencies they have with not being a tall team and not being very good defensively as they're not doing enough there, as we've seen, not just in these two losses, but I think there were some other games, some other signs. So definitely drop in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a good rest of the day. I'm going to have more on this game as Miami gets more prepared for ACC play coming up just in a few weeks. Thanks for watching and take care.